Welcome to my video on formative online assessments. Uh, this is a project for Education 6610. My name is Jamie Robotham. The intent of this video is to highlight what I have learned through the uh, body of research that I have consumed during this course on this topic. So why be interested in formative online assessment in the first place? Well, like a lot of things in education, it seems obvious that it's going to be good, that it's going to increase learning for students, that it's going to also uh, make things easier for the educator. But again, like a lot of things in education, just because it seems like it's going to be good doesn't actually mean that it is good uh, or we want to know how it's good, so we need to study it. Uh, the last thing uh, that gravitated me towards this topic is that I'm currently using formative online assessments in my own uh, teaching in my biology course, and I wanted to make sure that uh, I was doing things in the best way possible. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing out on any uh, advantages that I could give to my students and to myself. So it was uh, a great way that I could uh, look into this topic and, and learn a few things. So you can't really talk about formative online assessment without talking about what formative assessment itself is. So really formative assessment is assessment for learning as opposed to uh, of learning. So of course if it's for learning, it occurs during the learning process and not after. Uh, so it, what you're trying to do is provide feedback that would improve and and speed up the learning so the learning is better than it was uh, without the formative assessment in the first place. So one of the uh, quotes from one of the authors I really enjoyed was that it uh, means to empower the learner. So we're actually making learners better learners uh, for the future. So one thing that I've noticed through my uses of it, and it's also been noted by many of the authors on the papers that I've that I've read, is that they must be low stake, non-threatening, and usually for no credit whatsoever. I, I'm talking to my students all the time about uh, using the quizzes that I have online for them and that I'm not looking at them and they're not worth anything and do them as many times as you want and get terrible marks on it at the beginning if that's what you want to, there's no judgment. So the students have to be open to be able to use these formative assessments in order for them to be effective. Um, so another point that I thought was really nice from one of the authors is not just to raise standards, but to foster a spirit of learning. So we're really looking to make uh, students uh, more independent uh, uh, learners. So what are some of the benefits that I found for using formative online assessments? So like I alluded to in the previous slide, you're trying to create self-directed learners, learners that can figure out what to do next, uh, where do they need to focus, what do they know well, what are they weak on. Uh, for us as educators, um, we can identify students that may need a little bit extra help, whether that be a student that's not doing well on the formative assessments, or maybe a student that's not doing the assessments at all. Uh, reduced an test anxiety is a major uh, factor as well. If your, your questions uh, on your formative assessments are much like what you're going to see on a summative assessment, if a student is doing well on those, uh, they'll feel more comfortable and probably do better on their summative assessment. Uh, than they would if they didn't have a formative one to, to test themselves out onto. Um, for multiple choice, which was my main focus, uh, it was interesting to see that learners concentrate on understanding and comprehension with multiple choice type questions, whereas on essay type questions, uh, they tend to memorize a, a, a question's answer that may not come on the test at all. So really, multiple choice in some ways seem to be superior to a longer extended response. And uh, of course, getting feedback directly um, gives you uh, a greater impact than if you had the deferred feedback. And with formative online assessment, particularly with multiple choice format, you can get your feedback uh, immediately. So that's very powerful for the student. So what makes for good formative assessment? Well, good formative assessment establishes where the students are, so they know where they are, uh, they know where they need to get to, and we help show them how to get there. Um, it provides those opportunities where they can close the gap between where they are and where we need them to be. Uh, for us, it can shape our teaching. It can show uh, a deficit in something that we covered. Maybe they're not understanding a topic as well as we thought they could. So we can revisit that before we get to a summative assessment or the end of the course. Um, one of the big things uh, for me is that it supports equality and inclusiveness, as we said here because it allows the student to attempt them on their own without fear of judgment. They can take the assessment as many times as possible if you have it set up that way. Take it whenever they want, uh, if you have it set up from that uh, that way as well, and from anywhere that they want, if, again, that's set up that way. So uh, long gone are those times where 
that learning only happens uh, in that 60 minutes uh, when they're sitting in front of you. Now they should be able to learn uh, wherever they want and whenever they want. So what do students think about formative online assessments themselves? Uh, one of the things that came out to me in a lot of the literature is that if it's not directly linked to academic progress, they're not going to utilize it. So they really need to know that it is beneficial and they need to see how it's beneficial in order for them to, to uptake. Um, they can get good insight into the form and content of summative assessment. Like we had said before, it's really nice if you pair your uh, formative assessment to the summative assessment that you're going to have down the road. Again, as we had talked about, it identifies gaps in their knowledge and skills. They can see that. Uh, they can see, oh, I got that one wrong, so I need to go back and look at that. Uh, but though most uh, find it helpful and would recommend it to others, even in some of the research, those that, that didn't do the quizzes, they could see that they were beneficial and would recommend that uh, others would do it, even though they didn't do it themselves. Uh, some of the negatives ones that they said that they, they might not have the time to invest in it, it's something else that they got to do outside of their, uh, their in-class time. And there could be technical problems, of course. Anything that's online or uses technology can go down from time to time. So what are some of the holes that I found in, in the research on formative online assessment? Well, the main one, just like any other thing in uh, educational research, is that most of the studies are correlational and not causational. It's hard to get a good a, uh, experimental study in anything that deals with uh, students, uh, particularly in students with K-12. to So... Um, Mainly, you can get the link between formative online assessment and summative performance, uh, but it could mean, uh, like I pointed here, that that most of the students that do these sort of formative online assessments are the ones that are going to do good anyway. Maybe it's just a, a sign of a good student and not uh, really as beneficial as it might seem. That's the main thing that I would like to see addressed. Uh, some of the other things that we saw was that... Um, we try to figure out what kind of feedback is optimal. Do you need uh, a lot of copious feedback? Do you just need uh, a right around answer? How beneficial is uh, the type of feedback that you can give? Uh, another is that we want to know how students use formative online assessments. How do we set them up so that the uptake is, is high? Um, how do we set them up so that uh, they're easy to use? Thank you for watching. I hope you found the video informative and easy to follow. I really think formative online assessments is a very powerful tool and uh, a great research topic that deserves a lot more attention than is getting currently. Uh, as you can see here, that uh, the bibliography of all the papers that I read uh, for making of this video can be found in the description below.